what is the IRA and describe for me a little bit of the state actors that are behind it. Yeah, so the IRA was an organization, is an organization that was set up to, it's the best way to say it, it employed people who were involved in, as what we would call, they were sort of unidentified state actors. So what does that mean? They were people who were what we call trolls in the sense that they were human beings who were operating social media accounts and also purchasing ads on social media and other things, but in particular were operating social media accounts. And they were not on these social media accounts honest about who they were. So these were Russians who were working primarily in St. Petersburg, Russia, but who were pretending to be Americans in their online activity. So they were commenting about things that were relevant to American politics, um, and, the, and the understanding is that this is part of an organized influence campaign on the part of the Russian government to try to have an influence on uh, American, poli American politics. Now, there was a sort of question about direct influence on the U.S. election that was taking place in 2016. There was also a question of a sort of larger influence to try to sort of undermine confidence in democratic institutions generally in the United States, and particularly by encouraging sort of partisan strife. They weren't really trying to support a particular party or a candidate always, but maybe it was more of a trying to undermine our democracy? So I want to be very careful in being very clear about this. Of the research that we've done, uh, we cannot reject the claim that they were not trying to help a candidate. Um, and the U.S. intelligence communities concluded that what they were trying to do was help elect Donald Trump or help the candidacy of Donald Trump. Um, However, there is evidence that has been put forward that they were playing both sides of the game in the sense that, but to be very clear, that's not the same thing as trying to help both sides, right? You can play both sides of the game in the sense of trying to appeal to liberals, but if what you do is you try to appeal to liberals, and then after you build up some credibility among liberals, the last thing you say is, you know, Hillary Clinton's not really that liberal, it's better to vote for Jill Stein, or it's better not to turn out, that's not neutral in the context of the election. So I think both of these things can be happening simultaneously, where you can have a situation whereby these actors, these troll actors, are trying to embed themselves in liberal communities, embed themselves in conservative communities, stir up you know, sentiment against the other community in them, but at the same time, be in trying to help one side more than they're trying to help the others. So in our particular research, what we did find is that yes, there were some, uh, we, we looked in our research at the links that were shared to news sites by uh, these troll accounts. And what we found was, yeah, there were some shared to liberal news sites, there were more shared to conservative news sites. Um, but we also found that when we looked at links to YouTube channels, when we looked at the sort of 100 most popular YouTube videos that were shared, those were overwhelmingly to conservative sites. And again, just because we found them sharing links to liberal websites, it doesn't mean that they were sharing links to stories that were beneficial to Hillary Clinton. So for example, one story we showed that came from a more liberal website was about immigrants, illegal immigrants who had been arrested for committing a crime. So that comes from a liberal source, but that may still very much be playing into Trump's narrative.